Wandering through the great plains of life Things move fast, sometimes a blur Don't you let this bumpy road Separate you from the herd and When you think the day is done The sun is getting low We're all looking for something rare The great white buffalo The great white buffalo Podcast with Ben Mayfield Welcome to today's episode of the Great White Buffalo Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I am super, super stoked for today's episode. And here's and here's why. A lot of people are going, Ben. Tell us why. <laughs> why are you so excited? Why? It's because it's 2023. We got a lot hmm. going on. And I'm very pumped about getting the podcast started. If you listen to last week's episode, we talked about 2023. There's a lot of New Year's resolutions going in. A lot of new me, new year, and this podcast, I think it's going to go next level. In order to go next level, we got to have some fantastic guests. What level are we at now? Right now, we're at ludicrous speed. Okay. What's what's above that? God speed. I don't know. Oh. Maybe, okay. that's, maybe that's, too, that's too fast. That's okay. too fast. Somewhere <laughs> in between there. Got I, don't it. Know. I haven't really thought about levels yet. All right. Uh, we're, level, we're level 74 right now. And we're trying to get to 100. Got it. Uh, and in order to do that, I have Mr. Jake Riggs. How are you, Jake? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, and Mr. Ben. And, and uh, you, want, you want to introduce the next guest? Yeah, this guy is... Uh, so when I first met this guy, he was in fifth grade. And he uh, came to one of our youth events to play mm. bubble soccer. Nice. And he was terrified. To play with anybody, <laughs> but he wanted to play, but he wouldn't get in around anybody because he was so small and little. But now he's a big guy in college. It's Mr. Garrett Moore. Hey guys, what's up? Woo-woo! What's up, Garrett? Barrett? Now, now Garrett is everybody who's listening on Spotify, Apple is a normal episode here. But come, we're come also this, recording this way. You just walk there. He is All right, now. now poke your head down. down. Yeah. Here's Garrett. Here we Here's go, Garrett. Garrett. Um, so we are now also video podcasting. This is our second video. On YouTube, and Jake, can we, I gotta tell the story. Go ahead. I called Jake, to try to figure, figure out this camera thing. Right. And he's like talking to me. He's FaceTiming. He's talking to me. He's like, I don't know why that's not working. It's like I don't know either. He gets in here. <laughs> the f- not even a minute, like fifteen seconds. <laughs> he looks at it and realizes that I don't have it plugged in properly. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't plugged in all the way. I said, Ben, if you just do this right here, and I push it in like a centimeter, you could hear it click. And, I was and, like, there it is. And if you see last week's episode, it looks like a Western. It's like yellow. <laughs> and that's what Nathan and I got it on it. And he goes, oh, just click this button, and it fixes it. And now we're like in a clearer definition. I've done videos and stuff before, and so it's not your fault. I just, but I'm like, oh wow! So <clears throat> we're already see. That's the thing, though. From week one to week two, we've made a huge improvements. Just every week is going to be an improvement. The next, oh next my gosh. level. Next level. Garrett, you're in the next level. You're in college, man. How is that going? Dude, college has been such an experience. <laughs> just an experience. Not a good, experience. Not, a good or, a not a good one. or a bad one. Definitely been like it's a very neutral. It's very yeah. it's something. It is something that it's am I enjoying it? it? It's Maybe. Uh, but it's definitely been the weirdest, hardest adjustment of my life. Okay, what is what is a weird about it and what is hard? Tell me some. All right. So what I would say the weird thing about it is you just see so many different kinds of people, and I've realized <laughs> it's like something. Walmart. No, yeah. no. What I've realized, see Walmart. Blue you Ridge see Walmart. Walmart. You see people who are interesting. Oh. I'm in Athens, and I've realized. Now, uh, well, now be careful. Now we have a lot of Athens listeners. I know, I know. If you're about to say people in Athens are not interesting. A lot of the people who like go to UGA from like across the country, uh-huh. they're just and not world. as yeah, they're not as interesting as we are here in like the coming Dawsonville, Dahlonega. <laughs> Okay. Area. Right. Hold on. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, yeah, yeah. I'll tell some of like we're starting some fights right now. We have listeners who <laughs> are like, "I'm going to burn down Delonica." I love them. They're awesome. We're not in Delonica. I'll tell some of my yeah. like less than funny stories. Some of my less than interesting ones. I'll be like, "Oh yeah, my dentist used to know my uncle," and they're like, "Whoa, that's so wild! You live such a weird life." And I'm like. What? Dude, that what? Your uncle knows your dentist? Yeah, no, and I just tell them like some boring story, and they'll be like, "That's so crazy, but, dude." But here's the thing: that, <laughs> I, I think I think you're so equating confused. Athens like geographically to like coming to Lawrence Dawsonville. Well, I think what you're saying is your life 
has had a lot of crazy stories and things happen to it. It's not that crazy. That well, that get... one's not. Oh, got it. We've got a few interesting ones. Yeah, that's true. We've got some few. But I think a lot of these other people maybe don't have as crazy <clears throat> stories or not as good a storyteller. Because I bet you added some spice to that story. You always got to add a little bit of spice, a little mm. bit of pepper, you know? I've never known Garrett to tell a story that could probably take about 45 seconds that didn't take over five minutes. Oh, uh, this is always just add some pepper and some little pizzazz and stuff in there. And he doesn't mind if you have heard the story 45 times. Right. He'll go, Let, Let me tell, tell you a story. A new person walks in. <laughs> Let me tell you this story. And you're like, Garrett. And then you're like, Because you, one of the stories I want Garrett to tell is the ski trip story. Yeah. Well, because I remember one of the first time I heard that story it, is just as you described it, somebody else would walk up to the group. And you'd have to start over. And by the time he finished it, I'd heard the first half of it like six times. It was like, Garrett, just tell the story. He's like, yeah, but someone else just walked in. And like, I got, they got to hear it. And it's like every – he doesn't miss a detail. Though. No. Dude, it was one of my coolest moments of life. I want everyone to know it. Well, tell tell yeah. us then. So so we go on a ski trip, you know, slash snowboarding for those who like to shred. What's up? And we do it every <laughs> year. And this past year, Garrett – is, is this was that your first year going? That was my second time skiing your sec, ever. Your second time, okay, yeah. And you were on skis, not a snowboard. I was on skis. I'm a bit too unbalanced to snowboard. That's me too. No, no, no. I, I, I think you could snowboard. We'll talk. That's later. true. Okay. Because I'm telling you, I think you could. That's a lot easier than skiing for you. I, I tried to ski for ten. I'm not even exaggerating. Ten years <laughs> of ski trips with Wesley, uh, Delonica, United Methodist, and coming. And I was always told snowboarding was tougher than skiing. I could not ski. I tried, I tried, to a point where I just became the house dad when I would go on trips. You just sit in there and make, and sure, the, there. make sure the hot cocoa was hot. Facts. <laughs> and, and then one year, uh, some kids were like, Ben, why don't you just snowboard with us? And I was like, I don't know. Like, if I can't ski, it. there's no way I could snowboard. Yeah. Tried it. Conquered it. Boom. I could snowboard. Boom. I just want to throw that okay. out there. Because okay. I, I think because people had that, like, it's harder. Misconception. And, and maybe it is for some people, but I, I feel like if I could do it, you could do it. Well, I tell you, I'd say that because I'm, my, my, I'm not trying to take away from Garrett's story here. because no, I do want to No, you're fine. We on my time. one and only ski trip from when I was in a youth group, uh, I fell over a lot. Oh, yeah. I'll, like, like fell over, like, standing in line for the ski lift fell over. I would just, oh, that's kind of I would just start to... Just start to kind of lean, and then I just fall over. Yeah. And then I, we got to the top, and we were going down the mountain, and people are just they're zipping past me left and right, mm -hmm. and I'd get up, and I'd get going, and then I'd fall over, and right. I have to take one ski off, and I have to roll over and stand up and get it back on. 15 more feet, fall over again. And it was that way all the way down the mountain, and... It's, and it's, at the bottom, I ran into somebody, and they weren't happy about it, and it was the worst experience of my life. And it makes you feel horrible. Like, I'm not trying to suck. Yeah, they look at me like I'm like I'm the problem, <laughs> which I understand. I didn't know how to ski, but it's like I didn't do that on purpose. But and see, and I'm the same way because when you fall with skis, your 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 poles can go everywhere. Your ski can go sliding down. And like and it's a whole mess. It'll take you three or four minutes, maybe five minutes to get all your stuff back together. Right. Just to fall five more feet down the slope. That that was me. It was but horrible. With snowboarding, uh -huh. when you fall It's easy to stand back up. The snowboard is with you still. You just get yeah. back up. So like when I was learning, I fell a lot, but I could always just pop right back up. Yeah. So the recovery time was a lot quicker. See, so I think that would have that would have made me not as frustrated. Mm -hmm. If I could, because the 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 process to get back up and get my ski lock back in was probably this is probably not. I was gonna say a five minute process. It's probably not that long, but a good solid it, minute and a half. Emotionally, it's a five minute process. Yeah, because <laughs> like by the time I got back up, sixteen more people had skied past you know, me, and like they would go, and I, you're probably the same. And they and, and they like, ski hey, by. Man, bye, Ben. They, like, All right, well, they'd thanks. ski by and go loser. <laughs> Jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes you. Go home. <laughs> you Everyone hates you. Go die. Like, oh. Oh. Yeah, it was very demoralizing. All right. But but I wanted you to judge this, though, because okay. he has a ski story, and I also have a ski story. And I want you to tell me which one you think. Which is the best story? It's the best story. So okay. you go ahead. Go ahead. So, on the same ski trip, too. So it's not like I'm comparing years. Now, Got it. This is, I'm not very good at skiing. I will admit that. I was feeling a bit gutsy, and so I'm going down to blue because everyone else is going down to blue. It's called Wood Run. It's at yeah, Winter it's one of the Place, best ones. West Virginia. One of the best. Okay. Not always some open. Would say, some of the scariest, I would say. All right. So it, it I'm scary. going down, and it's very icy. 
the ice skiing. From yeah, it's what different. Well, it's different on the coast. on the East Coast yeah. skiing because the snow, everything will just. It's so moist. Everything will just freeze, pack and freeze. So it's it's a lot more dangerous. <laughs> it's ice. It's not. Snow. It's ice. It's right. It's ice. Yeah. And so I'm going down, and there's a sharp turn. I make it. We we have this on camera because Christina, Christina had a was there. She had a GoPro, and I pass her. It's awesome. No. And can you uh? Do you have that footage? Can yeah, you like, can, can you can you, can you link in it in here? <laughs> Honestly, J Payne has uh he has the footage. It. So I wonder if I while could. he's telling the story, so, you should just have the video go. I, I literally say on your left, and then about a minute later, I see Sarah Kate. She's going slow. Now here's my thing: is I do not know how to slow down. And my mind, it didn't. It's pizza slices, right? Not yeah. on ice. Got it. No, it is. You know, <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I, I didn't think just he go around didn't it. He to break at all. Like he just would go straight fast, turn straight fast, and when he would get to the bottom of the slope, kind of dive and stop. Yeah, that's was, how I used to stop. It was awesome. Okay. To be fair. Okay. So well, so you're going down. Sarah I'm going Kate's down, going slow. And so I think some someone's someone's going down here. Could be both of us. <laughs> could be one of us. And so I just think to myself, you know what? Self sacrifice here. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to take the fall here, and so I fall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. let me ask you this though: uh. Is it self sacrifice if you're the one pulling the trigger? Yes, because <laughs> you're like I have a gun pointed at her, but I don't want to shoot her. I don't so want to shoot, shoot myself. Shoot myself. <laughs> what? That's not self sacrifice. Don't put, paint yourself as a hero <laughs> in a story like I saved her life. You were the one going to cause the damage. Yeah. Well, he knew. He knew at one at some point. You knew at some point you had zero control. I was. Over the situation. I was. This was a situation so I you, no longer had control. You were just like, yeah, okay, I, that's, it, that's fair. Yeah, you I probably did to, save her life. I wanted to reduce the damage because I'm six foot two. I was about two hundred ten pounds then. Mm, I was about two two twelve. Okay, yeah, two twelve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, so uh, I'm like, I I would have. Destroyed her if I hit her. She's yes. a small, Sarah Kate is small petite. She, shout out Sarah Kate. What's up? Shout out Sarah Kate. She would have gone flying, but <laughs> I decided to be benevolent, merciful even. Benevolent and I fall way. and I'm sliding on my butt for like 10 feet. I'm just keep going. I'm literally sitting up. They have it on camera where I'm just sitting up, sliding, and then I hit a bump on the edge. I go flying in the air. The whole world is spinning, and then suddenly I hear a thump. And then I just sit up and I look around. I am about 50 feet down, 20 feet out from the where the trail is. And I just get up, and I'm like, oh, crap. And when Ben was talking about your ski stuff going everywhere, he wasn't lying. Yeah, it goes everywhere. So I could have walked further down and just gotten back up on the trail if yeah. I just walked further down, but I couldn't. One of my skis was still on the trail. The other one was being held by a tree root in a hole 30 feet up. <laughs> when he first told the story, he said, I fell 20, 100 20, feet. 20 feet up. And we're all like, I don't think it was 100 feet. but So, well, let me explain. So that was part of a bit because oh, yeah, yeah. Austin was there and he's like, dude, you got to you gotta exaggerate it a little bit more every time. Uh, so I was like, the, 50 is the, the truth. The, but then the, when Ben got the there, I was, I was doubling it every got time it. someone came in. So I was like, Ben, I fell off a 100-foot cliff. And then like – It was a there, mile. I fell three <laughs> miles. <laughs> I'm still falling as we speak. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It, it was 50 feet and then about 20, 30 feet out. I landed on my back on a dead tree. I got up, immediately started getting my stuff. My ski poles were down there. They were easy find. But then the actual ski – so I had to climb up by kicking the boots in and grabbing tree roots and pulling myself up. So I got about. And these were these were rentals. These were rentals. You got to get them back. So <laughs> I would have made sure of it. You got to get them I back. Got, I got it there, but then I could not get the rest of the way up. And at that point, I was exhausted. Yeah, I, was yeah, too, oh yeah. I was scared to go the rest of the way back down just because I, I was like. You climbed all the way up there, yeah. Yeah. And well, you so already went down at once. You can do it and then, yeah, just So what happened tuck and roll. Was, <laughs> one of the youth kids, Taylor, had gone by me, and she gets to the bottom, and she goes, guys, I think Garrett fell off a cliff. So about 15 youth kids go back, come back down the trail, stop where I fell. And so they're all just at the side of the cliff, Garrett, what's up? Dalton runs over, almost falls off himself because he's trying to help me get back. He's like, Garrett, I got you. And then one of the youth moms, Mrs. Payne, is like, no, 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 step back. And then <laughs> get away from the cliff. Get away from the cliff. The, the voice of reason. <laughs> yes. Eventually, Ski Patrol gets there, one member at first, and then another. And they're like, dude, you okay? I'm like, yeah, we're good. We're chilling. And we're then ch we're chilling. And then they're like, okay, 
where did you land? And I point to the dead tree because I landed on my back on a dead tree now, area with no this, snow. Uh, was it dead before you hit it or did you kill the tree it. and he made it a dead tree? Dude, I think it was dead before I got oh. there. But okay, if okay. I hit it hard enough to kill it, that would be pretty cool. That's pretty epic. If it was alive, his back would be a lot more hurt. Yeah. yeah. Probably so a lot of give they, to it. I point to it and they're like, yeah. they're like, are you okay? No injuries, nothing. And I'm like, uh, not really. I'm a little bit tired. That's <laughs> That's it. I just climbed all the way up here. And they're like, no concussion, nothing. And I'm like, nah, we're good. And they're like, okay, all right, you're okay all right, then? So. And I'm like, yes. Wow. And so one of them, Clay, he was part of Ski Patrol. They had to call a third Ski Patrol member to get a rope. And so I was just sitting there for like 10, 15 minutes on, on the of side. Cliff, like. You can't go up or, or yeah, pull yeah. It's not and like so you were just chilling. You were you were having to make sure you didn't slip and fall. Uh, I was having a good time, so oh, got it. I asked Clay because I got bored. I was just standing there. I was like, "What's your name?" And Clay and I started <laughs> talking. Started making friends. I was yeah, no. And then like, it's very good. At one point, yeah. I'm like, D- he's like, "You okay?" And I was like, "Dude, I'd be better if I had some Waffle House right now. Like, I'm craving some Waho." And yeah, Garrett, whenever, like, we go to a Braves game or something, you know, they got all the food options. Garrett will go find the little Waffle House stand just so he can get some hash browns. Dude, like, they, what do you think? It's like, I just want Waffle just House. Waffle they house. closed it down. Oh. oh and so really? the last time I went to a Braves game, I went to get the Waffle House. I went, like, across the stadium to get it. It wasn't there. Oh. And so. So sad. It was. But oh. eventually, <laughs> they R. get R. the third. <laughs> put that in the video. Yeah. <laughs> they get the third ski patrol member there, and they get a rope. One of them has to hold each end, and I have to put it like a U around me as I kick my feet in and, like, rappel the rest of the way up. Still very difficult task to do, uh-huh. but Four I made three it. three people pulling you up, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, only two of them were. Because we had that only on video. Only two were pulling okay, up. Okay, we had that on video, too. And Garrett's yeah. like this. <laughs> Here's where I'm laughing. Getting pulled up like a crane. <laughs> like, he was like, that claw. And came like, pulled him up. And, like, <laughs> Dude. Now, the funniest thing to me was because I'm looking. The claw is our master. And <laughs> he decides who will go and who will from stay. From what I remember, there was two women and one guy ski patrol member. The guy ski patrol member... Stood while the other two women held the so road. That's, that's the world we live in, man. This. Women, women doing the work. Ski patrol, equal opportunity. Nineteenth right. Amendment, baby. Nineteenth Amendment. Women do the same work as men. And so I finally get up and I see Clay on the phone, and this is the wildest part of the story for me, because I'd been talking with Clay, and he's on the phone now, and I'm like, "What's going on?" And then he puts his phone to his chest and he goes, "Hey, Garrett, how old are you?" And I go, "I'm a seven. I think I was seventeen at the time. Wait, I was eighteen. I and I go, Who cares? 18, sir. And he puts his phone back to his head and he goes, sweetie, he's 18. It could work. And then he hangs up the phone after a few minutes and he goes, Garrett, my daughter's 17 if you're interested. You seem like a funny guy. And I was like, <laughs> dude, I'll take that <laughs> offer. Did you get a number? No. Oh. Nothing came of it, but mm. it was awesome. And then I had to finish skiing the slope, go back awesome. to the top of the mountain and take a blue and then a green to get back to the cabin because they're like, you need to go rest up. You might actually be injured. The adrenaline might just be masking it. I was completely uninjured. I kept skiing the rest of the weekend. I took a really good nap. Sarah Kate almost we're, cried. We're, 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 we're getting into some details here. Yeah, I'll say, <laughs> you went back to the cabin. It was like, gather around, my children. <laughs> Let me tell you the story how I fell off this cliff. Gather around, lads. And like each kid's like, hello, you there. Yeah. Those fresh ears. <laughs> Let me tell you the story. <laughs> Come, come. They're like, all right. He had a scribe writing it as he's <laughs> yes. telling it. Jack, sure Jackson Payne. Jackson, sure it's, it's recorded. Jackson Payne is literally it's recorded my scribe correctly. at this point. Scribe, scribe, then, scribe. Okay. I felt so bad because Sarah Kate, like, you know how, like, we'll mess with her sometimes? I was joking, like, Sarah Kate, you pushed me off a cliff mm-hmm. at the bottom. And then she comes back to the cabinet and she's, like, almost in tears, genuinely blaming herself. And I'm like, Sarah Kate, Sarah Kate, it was a joke. It was my fault. You're good. She thought I was going to fire her. Like, you're out. She's a volunteer. <laughs> yeah, no. Fire her from volunteer. getting voluntold to leave. Got it. But all right, so that's that's the that's, Garrett that's story. my story. Yeah, and it's a great story. Don't get yeah. me wrong, uh-huh. I love it. And and I I didn't see it, but we all saw the video afterwards. Okay. And thank God for Christina having a video. Of yeah, it. we'll have the we'll, um, we'll have the video we'll up on the, the video. Like, we'll the video, video. It, it, is, it is it is further back. It's not like he's like first person. I remember you, seeing it though. You, you can see you, like, you definitely <laughs> you definitely see a little a little blo- you see, a little figure. You see the little blob go off, but there's enough time where it's like I've gotten back up and I'm moving around at that point. Yeah. Like I've already yeah. gotten my ski poles. So you don't see where I fell, but like 
there's just this little point, like a little speck in the background when you see me, and I'm like, that's Wee! the dead tree. That's where I landed, guys. <laughs> and Christina, I don't know if it's in the video or, or she just told me. She was like, at that moment, I went, did Garrett just fall off a cliff? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, is that Garrett? <laughs> Her exact words were, as captured by video, Holy cow! Holy That's cow. what she said. Holy cow! <laughs> Garrett. Uh, okay. Well, that's that's ski story number one. All right. So that's my baseline. So you gotta beat it. So my so mine's a different type of story. Okay. Okay. So I'm snowboarding, mm-hmm. shredding, love it, and we do like day you skiing. And, you and Sean White hang out, dude. Honestly, Sean White says he learned from he you. He texts me. It's like, yo, Ben. Can we hang? I'm like, dude, you're being real you got, needy. You got, to, you got to teach me some new tricks. <laughs> like, I need you to take it down a notch, Sean. Like, okay. okay. Um, but so we're, I'm there. We're going. It's great. And we get to the the very top where Garrett went on Wood Run, which is like a blue. Uh-huh. There's also another one that's like starts off as a blue, but you can do green or blue, and that's like the most popular one because it, it's the yeah. longest one, the longest like lengthwise. Okay. And so we're up there, and we start, and I can't find anybody. I'm like, what the heck? I can't find anybody. And it's night skiing. It's the last night. Mm-hmm. And it, night skiing is, uh, is over like at 10. This is maybe like 9.30, so it's real dark outside. Who determines that it's over at 10? The mountain? The, the, the slopes, yeah. The slopes are like, no, um, no more. And like they just stop running the lift. So like if you're on it, you just run it. You go, yeah, you go d- then, until you're done. Until you're done. And you can't get back uh, up. You unless, can't get back up. Unless you walk up. I guess technically you could walk Got back it. up, but that would be... Horrific. So, uh, real I get man. up there. Real man would do it. Yeah. Well, I did it once, but that's a different story. Okay. Um, so I get up there and I'm put on my snow. I'm waiting for people to come. Put on your snow or uh, my uh, snowboard. Oh, okay. And uh, I can't find anybody. I was like, all right, I'll just I'll just run it and just be done with it. <laughs> I'm in it, going down. The slope lights, like the giant like field lights, turns <laughs> off, <laughs> and no. it becomes pitch. Black. No moon out. No, no moon no, out. No, no moon, moon shining out. on the snow. Pitch black. <laughs> I didn't see it happen, but I remember being at the cabin and hearing yelling and screaming <laughs> from and, all over. And, and, it, well, and it's not every single slope that it happened to, but it was this, <laughs> just this your, one. Just yours. And, well, it was like two because it branched out. And, and so the <laughs> lights go off and I break. And I'm like, I can't see. <laughs> Immediately get hit by the person behind me. And we go forward, and and I go I go into I go into action oh, mode. No. I go I start screaming. <coughs> Everybody stop! Everybody stop! Because it's dangerous. Like if you hit yeah. someone, you can it's kill like, somebody. Yeah, like, it's, really it's like a pileup. Yeah, it's like a pileup. Yeah, on, like a, a pile on the highway. <laughs> and I and it, it sounds like I know it's kind of funny now because no one got hurt. It's but scary like, then. It was horrifying. Yeah. I got in fetal position because people were running into each other. You just yeah, you're like, bracing for somebody bracing. to come and just. Clip you on the back and of the head. Or slicing the and like, oh my like God. with the, with a ski thing. This is so scary. It is horrifying. <laughs> and so people are like people are, and then every people people start screaming, like, get down to stop, just stop, just stop, stop. <laughs> and and it's like, and I'm freaking out as the youth leader, like, are there my are there because I didn't know if it was campus wide at this point, but it turns out it was just these two slopes. Are my kids okay? Yep. Are they getting crashed? Are they getting head trauma? Are they gonna run to a tree? <laughs> <laughs> How many parents are we going to have to call no, when I get back to see, the cabin? That's, we got well, very lucky because I know the Baptist church I was the only that was one. with us. Well, let's was, was not tell their story because that person may not want their story to be told. Oh. Um, but I was the only church person from our church on the slope. Uh-huh. So like, none of the kids got affected. Eventually, the lights came back on. And like you just see all these people just like kind of sitting and laying down and some like, pile up like, like a war zone like a war like you just went to a There's civil war reenactment and they're like I got shot <laughs> like, all right you're, you get back in the game um, a lot of kids got tagged out and so it ended up and I'm like fr- I'm like hyperventilating you're a little shaking. bit freaking shaking and I don't know what's going on with other kids so I start seeing kids. <laughs> Eventually, because I get down, like everybody back to the cabin. Everybody back to the cabin. You we're ended. Done. You ended night we're skiing done. early. Yeah, we were done like thirty minutes. Maybe, well, maybe like twenty minutes, fifteen minutes early. But you were so um, you were so stressed out. So You're stressed. Just like, out. I'm ending this. Like I, I'm Why out, and, and I, I mean, I was teary eyed because I like because like it's it was it was terrifying. <laughs> so scary to be in pitch black, go- and I was snowboarding, 
and all of a sudden, I was like, oh god, I can't see, like, like, and like freaking out, and then getting hit, and then other people getting hit and crash, and then people are literally screaming, stop, 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 and then not knowing if someone that I care about or or in charge of, you know, is getting hurt or something like that, and so we ended up getting back. It's a lot of emotion. It's a lot of emotion, all within like ten minutes. The lights were out for probably ten minutes, um, or maybe a little Did less. Did you ever than get that. a? An explanation? An explanation of why that happened? Well, this is the part that really peed me off. Okay. I don't know if you remember this one. I do remember this part. I'm walking back because I'm like, I'm, well, one, I lost my momentum. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when you, uh, snowboarders, you don't have poles. So, if you don't have momentum on some parts of it, it's it just, you, yeah, you it's, can't, you can't get it back. So, yeah. so, I unclipped and I was like, and sometimes, like, you'll do one foot, you get a little momentum, and you try to snap back in and then go. I'm like, I'm done with this crap. So I took both feet out, and I'm You're just walking. mentally exhausted. Yeah, and snow boots are easier to walk in than right. ski boots. And I'm walking, and there's a ski patrol guy. Uh-huh. I said, hey, man, the lights just went out. Um, I don't know like what, what we need to do. Like, There's kids. He goes, I'm trying to remember exactly how he said it because it really made me mad. <laughs> it was like, how is that my problem? What? And I was like, what do you mean your I have kids here that I'm responsible for. One hundred percent. Is he employed by the by the? He's got the yeah. It's the same. Employed it's not by Clay. I don't it's not it Clay. Clay. Clay was a G. I want to shout out to Clay. It was not Clay. Clay's but he's a employed one. by Winter Place. Yeah. He's like, what do you want me to do about it? I was like, I don't know. Like, go make sure there's nobody dead up there. Yeah. Or or, or the lights going to keep going on? Like, like what's going on? Is you some, radio is some, to somebody. Is some and kid ask? playing a switch with the lights and like. <laughs> wow. Hello. Hello. Some kid at the bottom. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, do you think this goes to anything? I don't know, man. Um, and like, and I was like, like immediately, like you're dead to me. I was like, uh, do you said that and, to him. Well, I, I said I may have said some other things to him actually. What did you? How did you respond? Like, like, uh, bro, are you for real? I said, are you are you kidding me right now? And he was like, like what? Like, like I can't do anything. And I said. Um, I, I said I need your name and employee number. <laughs> no, I said <laughs> I'm gonna send an email to your superior. I'm trying. I don't want to. I don't want to lie or or misremember. But I said yeah, something yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> like that's real sorry that you feel that way or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And like, and I just kept going. And I was I was close enough to the to the cabin where I sent. A, I got my phone. I text all the adults. Hey, I text the group me. Everybody, we have a ski trip group me. Like everybody, go back to the cabin. We're like we're done. Uh-huh. Get off. And everybody then. And it was kind of confusing because some of the adults were like, because this is the only time I think in the youth group world that they've ever seen me shook. Yeah. Or like, because I, I don't know. I mean, we don't get in a lot of stress. Well, mission trip can get some stressful, but I don't Not get like stressed that. out. Not like that. And so everybody was kind of like, there's what's, like, what's pe- up with you, you, can, you can die skiing or snowboarding. Yes. Yeah. With lights on. Yeah, with the lights on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine with lights off. Rest uh, in peace to Sonny Bono yeah, and, and Natasha Sony. Richardson. We miss y'all so much. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So reference. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> just know they're celebrities and they died in skiing accidents. Uh, that's unfortunate. In the daytime. Yeah. So that's so, that's I'm not I'm not making fun of your college friends. That's wild, man. That's yeah. a wild story. That it was, it was crazy. And so like I will say, God moment that Garrett didn't hurt anything, and a yeah. God moment that no one when the lights went out. Dude, I mean, that, I mean that was crazy. It could have been. It could have been real bad. And I've been to Winter Place for over 10 years, and that's never happened before. How random. It was just like that one, and it, was, it wasn't very long, maybe like, I don't know, lights are out, maybe like four to five minutes. <sighs> Still enough time to do serious damage. Well, yeah, but, when you're flying down the hill. Um, and luckily, night skiing isn't as crowded. It's still crowded, but not as crowded as I did in the day. But it was, man, it was, it was horrifying. Jeez. So, anyways, those are your two stories. Okay, so now I have to pick which one is my is the best or my favorite, the funniest. What am I doing? Which here? one would you want to not? Which one would you want to live? Which one would you not want to live? Whoa. What, what, what do you mean? Like, like would you want to fall off a cliff? Or would oh, you I'd want to do. I'd want to do what Garrett did before was, before what happened to you. Okay, okay. Because I, I just like, I don't know. There's so many variables of what. Could have happened in your story, yours too, I suppose. Like if yeah. you went off at a different point, I just feel well, like ended a different way or something. I just like you know not being able to see somebody and somebody come plowing in the back of you. That's mm. so scary. And 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 so Garrett was kind of talking about there are instances of people getting hurt during the day, like people run into each other, people right. 
falling off. We had a kid run hit a tree one year. One of your one of didn't those. you get like a concussion or you broke something? I got a concussion. Yeah, a concussion uh, one year. That was when I was learning how to snowboard. Oh, I uh, I didn't know how to break, and so, so I, you used your I, head. I would I would just dive like <laughs> all right I'm done <laughs> <laughs> like I'm kind of done. But I was so okay. I don't mean to to monologue too much, but it is your podcast. You it is my podcast. You, you, you do what you want. What's up, bro? <laughs> uh, I I went from like I said I've never been able to go down a slope. And so when I learned I could oh I can stand up on a on a snowboard. Uh-huh. I would go like Garrett one thousand miles an hour. <laughs> there was I no was, there was no finesse yet. There was no finesse, and I was so excited and so like proud and like teary eyed proud <laughs> that I could get down a slope without falling forty five thousand times. I was just so proud. Yeah. But I didn't know how to stop, so I would just like go, <laughs> like, and it's like kind of like fall, you know, or get close to the ground and kind of fall, like, blah, 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 and like, and I didn't care because I was like, I did it. Yeah. Well, one of the slopes, the one that's right in front of the cabin, this was this was four year, five years ago. You always stay in the uh, same cabin or around yeah, the same, same cabin? Okay. Yeah, same cabin. Um, I hit a patch of ice, and this is and this is why this rule exists. Sensing a sensing a theme. I hit a slice of uh, <laughs> a, a, a patch of ice, and I went up. Like I could see my snowboard among the stars. I said, wow. Also night skiing. Uh, also night skiing. You need to stop night skiing. And I was like, like, man, I'm snowboarding the sky right now. That's so crazy. <laughs> and my head hits Hit the ice. Hits the ice. Oh. And my body then like does like a like an upward like I like I hit the ice. And, and like somehow come forward, forward and there's like whirr, like a rag doll oh my just gosh. going down. And there was there was kids, a bunch of kids like on that because it's the one in front of our cabin. And they all went like there wasn't even like a laughter, there was like a silence of like. Is it? I thought you were dead. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> on the ground and I'm like I'm huddled up and I may have told the story so I apologize if I have, but I'm like close to the ground I'm like don't cry don't cry. <laughs> don't cry. That was the first thing. That's the first thing I said. I said don't cry don't cry, don't cry. because because I'm like. Where's the pain? Where's the pain? Because I totally could. Like, because I'm in shock right now. Like, is there pain? And then I go, look at your toes. Look at your toes. Toes are wiggling. Look at that booty. Look at that booty. <laughs> Booty's wiggling. It's like all right. A shirt. I go like. He's got right. feeling. I, I, I go fingers, fingers. All right, breathe. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm asthmatic. I can't already breathe. So I was like, all right. So nothing feels broken. I don't cry. I get up. And like, pin, like, and then I run. Like, pin, you're right. I'm like. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm going to the cabin. And this was the first night of night skiing. And there was still like two hours. Like, I'm fine. I go to the cabin. Uh, Jeff and Alex are in there. I'm like, they're like, and they like, they heard it. And I think Jeff saw it. He's like, dude, you're all right. I'm like, I'm great. I'm going to go take a shower. It's fine. <laughs> I go take a shower. And I'm in there. And I, I think I may have fallen asleep or like dozed off or something. You're not supposed to do that when you have a concussion. Yeah, that's <laughs> a big no no. And so that, that, they knocked and I was like, Ugh. and I like, maybe like zoned out more so. I don't think I like, like I don't remember seeing black. I yeah. just remember like staring. You probably were. At, and then prob- time lapse. You, you probably were in shock. Yeah, and it may have been more, more of a shock. More than likely, that sounds like uh, what that was. And, and then they like knocked and kind of like got me out and I was like, yeah, I'm fine. and like, I got out of the shower and it was fine. And, I, I, and then and you realized you had still had your ski clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I took a full shower with my ski pants on. Like, uh, um, I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> <they're> like, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we gotta go, man. We gotta. I just gotta, took a shower with my ski pants on. What do you I, mean? I'm obviously not okay. <laughs> Eating a pop tart in the shower. Is this not normal? <laughs> like, like, no, it's not normal. This is not normal. We're Susan gonna say would be like, all right, you gotta. We're go. gonna take you to the hospital. Um, so you never were officially concussed. Concussed. But I think you, I was more in shock. You may have been. I mean, and, smacking your head like that. Mm-hmm. It was. It, I'll, I'll tell you a story about getting your head smacked. That's why we wear helmets now. Everybody's required to wear helmets. We uh, we went up to um, up to. <sighs> Um, up to the Okoe River, and you know mm-hmm. how along the Okoe there's a bunch of little offshoot roads where you can like there's like more water trickling down the mountain into the oh, river yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So we went up there with my my dad and my mom and my son, uh, who was probably three or four at the time, and my wife was there too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we're out walking around in the river, playing in the rocks. My son loves the river, and he'll pick up the rocks and he'll throw them in the water. He could do that for hours. And we were walking around, and my dad walked on a big, giant, wet river rock, 
and slipped. Oh yeah. And just when he fell, I mean, I it just it literally sounded like his head hitting that rock sounded like that. It was the scariest moment you of could, my life. You could die. Literally die. Yeah. So that's like when you said that you hit your head on that ice like that, it, it, no reason why you wouldn't think you had a concussion. Yeah. Well, and that's why I, I was like checking all my, I was like. Checking all my digits. And it, and it hurt. Like, like Your whole like, body was sore. Yeah. Like it was like. Well, that's like the, that's like the base of your nervous system. Mm-hmm. Like it, you're, well, you're, and I, I did ragdoll. They're like, Ben, trust me, the rest I, of your body also hit the ground. Yeah. Like, Cause you're going full <laughs> speed like this. <laughs> you used your you used the back of your head yeah. to do several front flips, and now I require every kid to wear a helmet. An adult. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so, why, I mean, so I don't know why I didn't do that ahead of time. Were there kids not wearing helmets out there? Yeah, there's a bunch of people not wearing helmets. Oh my gosh! I feel like everybody's wearing a helmet. Yeah, and I don't care if it doesn't look cool. This year we are getting like bandanas and putting around the helmets, yeah, so we can identify who our kids are versus. Random kids. Just buy your own really cool helmet or something online. I'm yeah. sure they're really Get expensive. one of those ones with the rubber mohawks. Those yeah. ones are really cool. Like the saw, bicycle ones? Yeah. I saw ones that were like, it was like uh, Ninja Turtle heads, and they had the bandanas with the eyes up here. Yeah, those are really That's cool. Yeah. The river ones are pretty cool, too. Like yeah. The river guys, they look. They have like a little cap. Yeah, it kind of goes in front yeah. of it. There's some, there's some cool ones. I don't know if people want to spend all their, spend a bunch of money on a helmet though. No, when well, you can just rent one. If you if you went all the time or lived up there, I could see you. Doing so, right? That's like when someone was like, "Ben, do you want to get like different ski pants?" I was like, "No, dude. I, I go once a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These are yeah. these are fine. I yeah. wear my dad's ski pants when I go skiing. That's perfect. We ain't dropping money on that. Yeah, yeah. That stuff's expensive. Ski per- stuff ain't cheap. The first year I went, I wore blue jeans. That's awesome. <laughs> Facts. Did you get? They get soaked. They did. Yeah. No one told me. <laughs> I don't know. No one I, told I literally, me. literally did. I went with Wes. I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. No one told me this. And, and so I, you're probably freezing. Well, I had blue jeans, and then I had, like, sweatpants over it. Oh, okay. To kind of try to help. Because I didn't it know. It just made it doubly wet. Yeah, it <laughs> just made it worse. Uh, and then when you fell every time, I was like, all right, this is terrible. Yeah. And then someone's like, oh, you have to get a special type of pants. It's like that wasn't on the list anywhere. Yeah. It didn't. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Shout out to Nathan. Wesley director didn't tell us a packing list. God. Well, you were in college at the time, so I'm sure you just yeah. assumed you could handle it. You could assume you know how to dress yourself. <laughs> Speaking of college. Oh, man. What's going on with You're you, You're in bro? college. Uh, yeah. First year? Yes. First year freshman at UGA. Yes. The University of Georgia. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Come on. Hey, man. Yeah, we're coming up on uh, National Championship Oh, yeah. That's Monday. this Monday. Oh, well, technically, when this episode goes out, the game's already played, so... That's hey, true. we won, we, baby. We, we dated ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Let's make us profits. Knock on wood uh, on that, Ben. Dude, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Um, yeah. Dude, I talked about Nathan and I had a joke earlier today when we did an episode. We were like, what if we just like did 47 episodes today? <laughs> and like, did like, like an hour. And then it's like, man, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> like, like, just just like, go dude, ahead and get them done. Like, yeah, get them like, knocked out. Dude, like, what did you get for Christmas this year in 2023? Like, oh, I got a new car. Like, <laughs> it's like something. New car for Christmas. That kind of, has that ever really happened to people? It never happened to me. I don't want the car. I want the bow. You see those commercials? Oh, the bow. Oh, oh. That goes on a giant, like, where yeah. do you even buy those? This I know where to buy a car. I don't know where to buy a bow. So I don't think anybody does. I, I do know <laughs> how that actually would get done. Uh, you would go to a fabric store. You can buy that kind of fabric. You just have to get the right length, and oh then they tie it themselves. Oh, my god! They would not tie a giant bow. They would do it for you. No, Okay. In the car one. commercials, the, of course the commercial people tie it themselves. I bet you could buy one on Amazon. You could probably buy one on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Someone comments, it's $144. At I bet Amazon. you actually oh, it's probably okay. really expensive. Yeah. But somebody who can afford to buy a car as a gift can probably afford to buy a bow. Yeah. I would put like a, one of those little sticky bows. I can't afford to buy a car as a put gift. Put that on that. You know, like people like yeah, not as a they'll, gift. They'll but. um they'll get their wife a car as a gift. How are those people able to conceal the fact that they just dropped forty grand on a car it's, as a gift? Depends on how they do their finances, maybe. Yes, that's true. My wife and I are not like separate finance people. All of our funds sit together. I know, like some some people have it separate. Some, yeah, some have like a, a joint, a yours and mine mm-hmm. type thing. Like, and we're not like that. We just are. It's Ours, it's ours now. So like we got you, married, everything if, became ours. If we went to Chick Fil A right now, <clears throat> she would go, "Oh, Jake just went to Chick Fil A." Right, like yeah. it just pop up because it's the same as yeah. Ours. And we're not like tracking each other's 
purchases or things like that. She told me, she said, I track him every day. If that were true, she would also probably say, and he knows how much I spend it on Amazon. Facts. When I get home every day, usually usually there's a couple of boxes at the door. You're like, Anna, Anna, Anna. I do it. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, we overtook the conversation. You're in college now. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, go, hey, go, dogs. go dogs. Go dogs. So, yeah, tell us about and you're living and, and you're living on campus. They force all freshmen to live on campus, and I got oh. the privilege of living in Creswell Hall. I don't know what that is. Well, it's is the worst. Cr- it, it's the worst dorm on campus. They it has cru- been. They call it Crustwell. Very crusty. Crustwell, Creswell. <laughs> Gross. Crusty yeah. Creswell. It's <laughs> disgusting. Okay. Uh, so imagine. Now, is it disgusting because of the people that live in it? No. It's That's just, it's a bit yeah. of both. It's a bit oh, of both. It's okay. mostly the place though, because <clears> so <throat> a bathroom, a safe haven. It's supposed to be a good place to decompress, you know? Not in a dorm. What, what, <laughs> dorm? What type of, what's, what do you got to tell me the style? Is it a community bathroom? Imagine, imagine this. Imagine you walk into Walmart. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, but like the bad Walmart, like a bad Walmart. And like you go into so the, the bathroom. Blue Ridge Walmart. Got it. Yeah, probably. And <laughs> this you is just the second go, time you've mentioned you Blue Ridge Walmart. You just go Walmart. there. Some stories. <laughs> and it's, the, it's just not good. Okay. And then imagine that, but they also have showers there. Yeah, and yeah. It's just like a dorm. But there's it's showers in a bathroom. It's just dorm yeah. bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> you're just describing. I, I I know what you're talking about. It's it's just not a good place. Is that your first time experiencing like a, communal a, dorm, a communal I've bathroom? I've seen the other dorms' bathrooms. Uh huh. We are not living. Are they communal? We're not, They're communal. We're not but living like, the same ours lives. Ours are like Walmart <laughs> stall. But then I see Brumby Hall. They have hard, like hardwood doors that go from floor to ceiling. There's uh, no crack there. I see what you're saying. Like, you got you to pay your dues, you man. You don't mind the fact that it's communal. What you're saying is, well, I want some like a door that doesn't have cracks. I want, people can see I want some peace. As, as much money as you're paying, you feel like there should be some upgrades. Yeah, and then they put the That's new, fair. brand new, fresh, clean, awesome dorm right in front of Creswell. And so, <laughs> so I, I've been in there once. You get to see what you're missing. I've been in there once, and I was like, where's the bathroom? They're like, oh, it's right across the hall from us. I go in there. It is beautiful. It is. There's only one bathroom in that bathroom. It's like a Bucky's bathroom. They yeah, have that works there and cleans it constantly. It's like <laughs> there's there's slushy machines in their lobby. It's a massive bathroom, bro. They could have had a couch in that bathroom. And I'm like, we are paying Ew, the who same. Sit on a couch. I'm like, here's my thing. I am paying the same amount for housing as them. That's true. And then I am. Living. Are they freshmen over there? Yes. But they're oh. better than you, though. You have to remember that. It's yeah. true. It's when true. You, when you walk out, when you walk outside, and they they're out there too. Do they like call across like trailer trash? <laughs> so we have get been, up our lawn, get dude. Up our lawn. <laughs> you we, suck. I'm not sure how our water's not yellow like yours. <laughs> so on, actually, on that comment, Creswell has been referred to as the Flint, Michigan of UGA oh, dorms. Oh, hey, oh, hey, hey. Shout not, out to all of our listeners of Flint, Michigan. That's not we, love good. You. we love y'all. But, but you're I, talking about like as far as quality of. Quality of amenities. Yes, and then I will. Flint, say, Michigan people got really screwed with their yeah. water by the government. By the government. Shout and out to the government. Do that. But <clears throat> and then it's funny because right, there's no politics. Their uh, their fire system or something or someone sucks. Apparently, they someone or someone. <laughs> Creswell fire system is a guy. No, with a Creswell. Bucket. Creswell, we're good. We're good. He's a, banging it. Hey, the fire! The fire! <laughs> He's coming. In. He'll fill up a bucket and go throw it on the fire. Oh, I got to go fill up the bucket again. <laughs> the BDM dorm, the new fancy one, they have had like so many occasions where the fire stuff has gone off and there wasn't actually a fire. And they all had to evacuate at like 2 or 3 a.m. Never had that at Creswell yet. It's because it doesn't work. <laughs> probably yeah, true. Probably a drill. They're like, oh, didn't work this time. Put them oh, well, Cres- all those Creswell kids dead. <laughs> they want it to burn down. Maybe not with kids in there, but they do want it to burn That's down. true. They want the insurance. Oh, they, they can't. Can build, they can they build can't. a new one. No, they can't because what happened is. They can't burn it? Athens. They've tried. Currently. It's got a curse on it. Athens, <laughs> the construction codes, they're not allowed to build over five stories anymore. Oh. Creswell is nine stories tall and has the some of the most rooms out of any of the dorms. So if they uh, lose Creswell, it, it's there out of necessity. Yeah, and they'd have to build two more dorms that to build b- build back on Creswell a five story dorm and then find another spot to build another dorm to house everybody in there. And they about doubled the freshman class this year, which had Jeez. so many students that because of the freshmen live on site requirement, they had to start paying off upperclassmen. To move out of their dorms 
so that so freshmen would have spots. Well, they don't pay them off. They don't well, they, they offer them an incentive. Uh, well, Financial they, they, incentive. Well, I think, incentive. I think they just don't give them priority. It's like, because I worked for Residence Life at North Georgia. What they do is they had the same rule, but when they started running out of housing, they just go, freshmen get priority. So we'll fill it the freshman first, and then y'all get into a lottery. Why not you I mean, get how, it? You're not guaranteed. How housing. likely? How likely are you next year to probably if there's no requirement to live on campus? How likely are you to live in a dorm? I'm going to do everything in my power to get an apartment to not live on campus, right? Because yeah. it's just more fun that way, and that gets you a bit more into the actual city I don't know. experience. But I, now, I, I say this coming from a college that was very small at the time. I'm not, I'm not understanding your entire predicament because I went to a very small private Christian college, Drew McConnell, Go Bears, and uh, there were about 400 people living on campus at the time. Okay, that's 400 small, students yeah. on campus. There was like 2,000 commuters, but on campus was a very small community. Uh, dorm life for us was really fun though. We had a we had a great time. I, I had and our dorms were like they were they were kind of they were crummy. I don't know how <laughs> I've never been in Crum Crumwell Cres Cres Hell Cres Hell. There's about hundred names for this place. Um, but I always thought dorm life was fun. I did eventually move into an apartment though when I had the ability. Well, that was fun too. And I lived uh, two years on campus, and, but mine was a uh, uh, what was it called Sweet Style. So oh right, so you had now. you had like a you shared a bathroom with one other person with one other person, and I had my own room. Yeah, um, and then there were some that had like two two, but the bathroom and the shower two separate rooms. Gotcha. Ours the bathroom and the shower in the same. But room. You guys are just communal bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so I, so I think like if you lived in like situation like that, you may have a better experience. Maybe I don't know. I always thought communal bathrooms are fun. There was a we'd always like go <laughs> steal people's clothes when they were taking a shower, <laughs> and we had we used we had this kid. He used to take what's called a country dump. <laughs> have you ever heard of a country dump? I have not. You've told me this. Have one. you heard about a country dump? You've told me this. It's before. basically it's when you go take off. You take off all your clothes to poop, and oh. so and so we'd walk in and we'd see clothes hanging over the one of the stall doors, and we immediately knew. We'd be like, "Hey, Doug." He'd be like, "Hey, man." <laughs> He's in there taking a dump with all his clothes on. This is what he did. They're all right. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when your stomach hurts enough, you just that's I guess. where it ends up. But yeah, it's called a it's called a country dump. Well, uh, <laughs> just so you know, I've not I've not experienced that. But what I will say is, <laughs> although Cres Hell sucks amenity wise, uh -huh. it is so much fun. Oh yeah, some Tom, of the dorm life's pretty fun. Like some of my best friends from college, I have met in Creswell. Like almost yeah. my entire college friend group, shout out to them, lives on there. Like Cooper, Elijah, Michael. They all live the same hall as me. To subscribe to the podcast to get you a free hat. Cooper Hamilton. Don't don't quote me on that. I don't make the decision. Subscribe. It's really <laughs> cool. Uh, same with you, Elijah and Michael. Uh, so yeah, no. So it's, it's not trauma bad. bonding almost. That's what it and is. Then, trauma. It, it's trauma bonding. Here's what the worst part is. So Michael and Elijah, they live like five doors down from me. Uh, we found out that my key works on their door. <laughs> your dorm key is only supposed to work on your dorm. So you can open up your dorm and their dorm? Yeah, but their key doesn't work on mine. Do you have a skeleton so key? Have, yeah, like a master we've, key. Yeah, we've tried it. It doesn't work on any other locks on our hall, just theirs. What is happening? That means you're soulmates. Yeah, I yeah. know. That's what I'm saying. You guys you belong have, together. You have, you have a key to their heart. I know. <laughs> it's kind of bromantic. Have you... Let me ask you this. I, want, I was curious about this. You were very apprehensive... I don't want to share too much for your life unless you want to, but you were apprehensive about it, kind of nervous. But I always see as a very community oriented people, you, you, you people gravitate to you because you're a great storyteller. You love people. You have a lot of confidence, and so definitely in what you're saying too. Like you, but he was nervous going into it though. It's a very, it's very new. So that's where I was wondering, like, where did that, like, you not having that community established that you had here. Going into it, how does that turn out your first semester? I mean, you just shouted out some Creswell people. But. Yeah. So obviously in your so, first three or four months, you've really made some connections. I have, and I will say I've not really oh. made any where I'm like, holy crap, this is this is my guy. My guy. But I, I don't really have that yet. And I will say, because I've thought about this, and I've realized that's why I struggled so much in the beginning, and I've talked with my brother. It was kind of the opposite for him. High school. I had the youth group. 
I was a major player there. I could go almost anywhere in the church. People hey, would be like, major player. They have player cards of me. I was like, get yeah. stats. Like, I could New go. New Testament. Like, with well, the that's true. You were really involved in youth group, and you helped out with modern, modern worship, worship service. And I was were... part of the children's ministry as a kid. That's true. Like, Everyone you... in the church knew me. I could go anywhere and be like, oh, my gosh, hey, Garrett. Parents knew me. Like, before I left this summer, I had so many parents be like, it's because your mom what are they called him and do said, without keep you. an eye on him, please. <laughs> Shout out, Pam. Yeah, I Pam. love you. <laughs> and so I was big there. High school, I knew so many people. I won the class clown superlative. I was so popular. And so it's like, I was like pseudo famous <laughs> so for popular. Forsyth County. I knew people from all over. Well, and it's like... celebrity guest is yeah. Garrett Moore. And so, but then I go to Athens. The famous guest we were at. <laughs> I go to Athens. I don't know anybody there. No one knows me. Yeah, you, you're... you're Hey, man, there's always a bigger pond. There is. You. And it's it was like the Zero to Hero story, but in reverse, man. Zero to Hero. I was going from hero yeah, to zero. Because it's like... Forsyth County, I walk in a room, and everyone's like, yo, Garrett, what's up? College, it's like, who are you? Move. <laughs> yeah. I, My new name, Hey Kid Move. <laughs> I see that. You were, you were a big fish in a little pond, uh-huh. and now you're still a big fish, but the pond's a lot bigger. Like That's Center. right. Yep. That's and it's actually scary, because you're also like, <clears throat> to me, like, because, you know, you and I are similar in that, in that personality-wise, but what happens is you're not really nervous about yourself but you've done a lot of work to establish where you're at like you've done a lot of progress to make all these connections and it's almost like you're starting from scratch that's true like i i watched garrett grow up and i remember when when he was a kid i was like this kid's gonna get his butt kicked when he goes in the middle school and high school like i really i was concerned for you because you were such a little hothead but you really grew up and you became like a staple as a part of of that youth community and to move into something where you it's just there's a lot of uncertainty there you're not sure how it's going to turn out who what friends you're going to make or not how your classes are going to go you know you're just you're kind of you're upending your your uh, routine and then you don't know what's going to happen yeah and Mm -hmm. that's just how it really felt yeah because like all of my best friends from high school, they all went to either UNG or one of them goes to Florida. I had one of them did come to college with me, but we never really hung out that much at college. Yeah. But we started hanging out a bit. Place more. like that's so big. I mean, unless you're intentionally trying to hang out together, you're right. gonna probably gradually drift apart. Unfortunately, but yeah. Uh, he are you talking about um, Bennett? No, I'm talking about my buddy Kirthan. Oh, oh Kirthan. somebody from Bennett was also school. there, but I, I right, did but hang like, out with Bennett he, a lot. Okay, that's good. I was gonna say he he had already been there a year, so he had, like established a friend group and stuff like that. Not that you couldn't join that, but it's yeah. I, I, first semester of college for me was the hardest. Um, I wanted to quit after my first semester because it was just such a um, like I just like cranked my world around and didn't think that I could handle staying there and I almost didn't I almost was like I'm just gonna get a job and not go back but I ended up going back and then that that second semester is when I met the woman who eventually became my wife so like there are you know you kind of got to go with your gut on some things um, but don't make an impulsive decision too Um, it's a weird balance to walk but it sounds like you're in a really good place and when do you guys go back um, I'm probably gonna head back Sunday. Okay. Because They're classes already start... back. <clears throat> Wait, I'm At sorry. this point, yeah. By oh, the right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But classes. And the national champions. I forgot, I forgot we, were t- we were time traveling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, classes. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really matter. We're, what? So do you guys? Um, where is national championship? It's, it's in California. No, win. Oh, I mean yeah. not win. <laughs> that's the that's the question <laughs> you answered. Wait, it's in California. It's in California. Yeah. California. Do you guys have something planned on campus for like everybody to get together and watch it? I like, don't really know. I was actually going to message the, the, the guy. Be really cool. They're showing at Stegman. The, the I think basketball that's policy. probably oh, what they'll okay. do. Okay. But then I would also, say it'd be cool if they showed up at Stanford Stadium, but it'd be too cold. I'm going to message the guys, yeah. see what they're doing now. Yeah. Downtown during the championship or post championship, I saw the videos from last year. It was wild. insane. There was oh, riots. Yeah. I want to see it personal. I want to Did see. Did they throw it a goalpost into a river? No, but there was a guy who climbed a lamp post and started doing pull-ups on a piece of metal rebar sticking off the side of it. I want to be him. 
I want to be him. I want to be him. He's it's a goal to it's a goal to shoot for. It's a goal. I want to be able to do pull ups in front of the crowd, dude. And once you've done that, you just go. I, I've, I've accomplished everything. I congratulate guys. Him. I'm dropping out. I've got what I came <laughs> as for. As far as I can go in life. And then the guy <laughs> who did it last year was like. Hey, that was my gig. He took my job. Yeah. I like to believe that he's graduated and he'll see it on TV. And how many go, pull ups? How many my pull, successor? How many pull ups did he do? Uh, it was at least six. four. You in need the to video. go find it and count because you need to do more. See, I can do five in a row. Uh-huh. Currently, I'm a bit of a hefty fella. You need to start. You need to start lifting a little more in the next couple of days. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna rest the body. We're gonna rest the body. Okay. Let it recover. Got it. Well, <clears throat> Garrett. What we normally do, I know you're a huge listener. You do wear our merch, a gray white buffalo hat. Mm-hmm. This is uh, my main hat, yes. Um, and it's UGA colors, too. It worked out really well. Yeah. Um, but we like to end each episode with Nugget of Wisdom. And so I haven't really done a lot of Nuggets of Wisdom. I got I to think about like, what is my Nugget of Wisdom. I got to think about one, too. Uh, but that's how we like to end each episode. Just kind of like a little piece of Nugget. For someone to chew on, they're listening, they're like, hmm. I didn't think about that. Or, oh, that's interesting. Do you have one? I'll let y'all go first. I got to think. I'll give you one. Life is all about balance. Mm. You need to find balance in everything. I think there's there's definitely a way where you can go too far one way or the other. You need to find a good balance like I was talking about with uh, my first semester in college and uh, almost not going back. And it's well, you don't want to make a gut. You want to go with your gut, but you don't want to make an impulsive decision. So you have to find a nice balance in between there. I think I think with everything, you can either do too little or too much, except meth. You can always do no meth, and that's the perfect balance. The balance is zero. Yep. Uh, <laughs> hard so drugs. Just because you're out there, pass. you're like, nah, I was thinking about it. Yeah, free base cocaine. Zero. Just no, mm-hmm. none of that. That's the balance. Shout out Walter White. Shout out Walter White. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was thinking... Skiing and snowboarding is all about balance. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's my nugget of wisdom. <laughs> no, Avery, uh, my friend Avery Ross, shout out to Ave. He that was he always said it's all about balance. It's all about balance. He said that all the time. Uh, and I think that's really that's really wise. Uh, for me, my little nugget of wisdom. Oh man, I'm trying to think about what's going on. Uh, last week's episode, I talked about this New Year's resolution, and one of the words I'm working on is freedom. Uh-huh. Uh, it was my my star word of the year uh, to really focus on that. And I think I'm I'm trying to. I have what ideas of what it means like within my life. Right. You know, from graduating, that anxiety being lifted and living it out. I got some house projects I'm doing, doing some other things, trying to learn more about the Lord, looking at different routes. But I think right now my negative wisdom is ask God more. How often do we not ask God? Like we ask God for things. Like, Probably all the time. Like, God, give me we're, wisdom. We're just, God, make, we're just making decisions yeah. and not really thinking or praying about them. Like I, I want my relationship with God to be proactive and active and not reactive. I think we have such a reactive relationship with God. And I'm speaking for myself, but I think there's other people who could probably relate to that if like, Oh, I'm going through something tough right now. Man, I need God now. Uh-huh. Like versus, hey God, I know there's going to be storms. Let me start preparing yep. now. And not that I'm not going to need you during that storm. I'm probably going to need you. I'm going to cling on, or not cling on. I'm watching Star Trek. I'm going to cling <laughs> on to you more so than ever. Yeah, but that's what he's there for. But but but, but I'm but I'm proactive in that relationship. Uh-huh. And I think, like, for the word freedom for this year, I want to be more proactive of going, God, what is what do you reveal to me what that means versus me going, this is what it means. Thanks, yeah. God. Yeah. Like, what does that word mean in my life? So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's yeah. my little so, nugget of wisdom there. I'd say for that, that my biggest thing that I've learned in the past year or two is to always keep growing. Because on your thing with proactiveness, God is constantly giving you things to prepare you for the next challenge. Mm -hmm. And so in my experience with that is a lot of times you don't know you've learned something, gained a new wisdom or skill until it's happened later. And so, yeah, until you're, until you're put in that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I've noticed that throughout like just this past semester, it's like, wow, I made a lot of crappy mistakes in the past, but I've learned from all of them and they've prepared me for these moments that are here right now. Yep. So I say every day, try to learn something new, 
Yeah. Every experience, every person you meet is something that becomes a part of you, and you get to decide how it goes into you. If you want to view it negatively, tear yourself down, not going to do anything positive for you. But if you choose to view it as a learning experience, as an opportunity to grow, Mm -hmm. you'll become better and stronger as a person, and you'll be more prepared to handle situations that come ahead. That's absolutely true. Like life is all life is all lessons. Life Mm -hmm. is all learning experiences. Constant. If you make a mistake, that's a learning experience, and you know not to make that mistake again. So that's a good that's a good way to look at things. This was really wise, Gear, and I think to just uh, tag to that a little bit from my experience. Don't let shame keep you from learning. You know, when you make a mistake, you're like, oh, there's something to learn, but you just have so much shame or guilt, or other people will will try to not let you grow or try not insight, like, man, cut those people out. Don't let the shame and guilt, you know, yeah. tear you down and just go, my relationship with the Lord is superior to any of those people. And like someone the other day, I, I, I heard this and it was really, it, it hit me and it struck me differently. It said, he was talking about friendship and he talked about my, his, like his friend did something like stupid. And he goes, and everybody was like, I, I, that was that's stupid. Like, I can't be friends with you. Like, like you know, I, yeah. had to, I had to distance myself because you did something stupid. And he goes, then why was I friends with that person? Were you really friends? Was, you... Yeah. Like, was I even really friends? He goes, I'm not going to agree with that person for what they did. Right. But I'm going to walk beside them and go, I need as a friend to allow you to know how that wasn't okay. Yeah. And then also... Oh, tried to help you grow. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you think like being a friend is just kind of like supporting your buddy or whatever no matter what. Like, okay, I'm not going to support your decision. I'm going to tell you that's a dumb thing to do. Sometimes you have to tell people the harsh truth. Mm-hmm. But I think you're more of a friend in doing that and then just letting people kind of wallow in their own, you know, yeah, like, stew that they've made of crap. But you're but you're also not just t- calling them out to tear them down. You're calling them right, out it's, to it's, lift them up. It's it's not it's not to say you know what you did was wrong and you're stupid for it it's you know you really you could you could live to yourself to a higher standard you could lift yourself up and let me be walk better. beside you and let's you let's it. try to figure that out together you know yeah. talk me through your process or whatever um, yeah that's really good and like keeping people positive people in your life is a great thing you don't got like i think you you just said like the people who are like kind of tearing you down get those people out of your life i just my my son was having this issue with a kid at school who was picking on him and, and I was like, well, can you, can you like keep yourself away from this kid? And he's like, sometimes, but sometimes he's still like around, like he stands with me in line when we're waiting for the car ride or something like that. And I said, listen, man, um, it does not matter what this kid says or thinks about you. Does not matter. Irrelevant. It's irrelevant. What matters is what you, your mother and I think and your grandparents, the people that love you, that's what matters. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't got time for that kind of negativity or people in your life. And we always tell him he needs to be nice to everybody. Right. Um, and you, you know, even if this kid is being a jerk to you, you just do your best to be nice to him. You don't want to mm-hmm. sink down to that level. Um, but just like do everything you can just to stay away from him. Yeah. You know, it just because you don't. I, I've learned in my. 37 years this July. Oh, boy. Happy birthday. Thank you. Well, <laughs> it's in like it's July six, six months. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. We're time travelers. Um, just you, you don't got time for negativity in your life, man. You yeah. don't got time for negative people talking nonsense and just pulling you down. Dude, Sydney Smith. Shout out to Sydney. She's been on the podcast. I had some people come at me. You know all that. Yeah. And she said, Ben, they're just irrelevant. Irrelevant. They're irrelevant. That's exactly right. She, people, said, she said they're ir- not irrelevant to God. God loves them. Yeah. God's going to be with them. But they're relevant to you. Bye. Yeah. Cut them out. Like, why are you letting that? And I was like, and honestly, I know it sounds so simple, but when she told me that, I was like. It was like an epiphany moment for you. Just yeah. Like, bang. And, it, and it changed. And I was like, I became happier after hearing her say that. Yeah. I became happier more joyful. I was like, all right, they're irrelevant. Yeah. And to this day, when someone was like, nah, irrelevant. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter. Not irrelevant. I want to be careful to say they're not irrelevant as in. You know, they don't matter and no one loves them. Yeah, but but like to you in that scenario, in that situation, like, and you're always going to, you're always going to do your best to love everybody. I am too. That's just what we, that's what, as Christians, that's what we do. We -hmm. try to love everybody, but I'm not going to stand by and let somebody just like speak negativity constantly to my life and not build it up at all. I'm not going to do it. Just you, unfortunately right now, you're just not going to be a part of my life and that's it. 
and uh, maybe that'll change later on. But I'm just going to surround myself with people who are encouraging, that love me, and uh, that's that's yeah. why we love having Garrett around. We love he's Garrett. An, he, we love Garrett. He's an encourager. Um, he's a great guy to be around. And you uh, do at least five pull-ups? Do at least five pull-ups. I'm waiting for that YouTube video. Uh but you know who's not irrelevant? Who's that? All of our listeners. And hey, all the listeners out there in the Great White Buffalo y'all. Nation. I love you listeners. Uh, we also <laughs> just want to say, don't forget we're on Apple, Spotify. If you could on Apple, leave us a five-star rating. But the big thing is we're on YouTube now. So this is a, this will actually be our second week. Yep. So if you didn't subscribe last week, we're on again. And our video quality is better. Hopefully the audio quality is, is You're better. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> no, Jake, crush that. Make sure on YouTube that you subscribe and hit the bell to get all notifications. Hit that oh, like button. That. That Leave a comment channel. down below. It helps the channel to, to do what? I don't subscribe mean. and hit the bell to get all notifications subscribe for all new videos bell. for the Great White Buffalo. I got to put that on. Like and comment, share with your friends. And uh, Sydney, speaking of Sydney, it's going to help me make a TikTok. And You're going like, to be on TikTok? Yeah, and she's going to clip <laughs> video stuff. Okay. Uh, awesome. Of like, because that's apparently that's how people get podcasts and share clips and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. You We're do, kind of a long format. We don't say a lot of. You could do like the shorts on YouTube as well. Instagram shorts too. I'm addicted to that. So yeah, that's I, I a need format a social that media gets person. used. Anyways, all right, Jake, hey. Garrett, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Uh, Gary, you want to get on video real quick? Yeah, yeah. Let me get uh, come in right here. Yeah, yeah. You got to huddle down. Here you go. Hunker down. Hey. We love y'all. Oh, gosh, you almost fell over. <laughs> see, you, see you next week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs>